Hello, my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here, and today is the day I'm going to tackle my mending pile. And you know, I totally get it, it's not the most exciting project out there, I understand, but I can tell you from my personal experience that the feeling that you get when you're finally done with it, when you made your clothes wearable again, when you've saved a little bit of money in a process, and of course, up to your sewing skills, all of that is pretty contagious in a good kind of way. So I truly hope that we can encourage each other, we can support each other. So if you have a mending pile that's been sitting right there in the corner, nagging at you, definitely grab it and let's jump right into it. So, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it fun and light for my own personal sake because I do have a variety of projects here today from like, mending and patching holes to a bit more complex situations where I need to add an element or two to make the garment wearable again. So the goal is to get through all of this, but we'll see how it goes. And I think I'm going to start with the most obvious one. And uh, my husband somehow got a huge hole, a huge rip in his work pants. Now, I shouldn't say a rip because the stitching just came apart. So the waistband separated itself from the entire pant leg. And here, I, all I have to do is simply Simply reunite them again and I'm going to tuck the pant leg back into the waistband and I'm going to try to stitch it but it seems like I will need to get in there with hand sewing needle and thread a little bit because it makes it really really difficult and challenging to sew an area where you have the belt loops because obviously you can't sew through them. definitely say that that's probably one of the most challenging parts about mending and upcycling because you have to sort of reinvent the wheel at times. So challenging but not impossible and that's it. This first one is done. It was easy peasy, kind of gets you going, gets you started. So now let's move on to the second one. Now there's actually nothing wrong with this next garment in terms of holes or stains or seams coming apart or anything like that. And interestingly enough, this was made entirely by hand. So there was no sewing machine involved whatsoever. I did everything with hand sewing needle and thread. And I did an entire video on how I made this about two years ago. And so far, so good, going strong. The only thing is that when I made this little blouse, my initial idea was that I'm going to wear it with a jacket. But for the last year or so, I've really caught myself on a thought that I would like to wear it without a jacket as well. But I do get sensitive skin on my shoulders. And if I wear something without a jacket, which is quite often because it's really hot and humid here, then I would like to have at least a little bit of a sleeve to sort of cover those shoulders. And as you can see, it features a drop shoulder, but no sleeve. So I think that's what I'm on a mission to do here. So that way I can actually wear it more often. Lucky me, I actually do have a little bit of a remnant left from the times that I did make this blouse. So I'm going to use this in order to make a little ruffle sleeve. But I also understand that this is sort of like a one of a kind situation because those of us who sew, chances are we hold on to the fabric scraps and fabric remnants. But if you don't sew and you just upcycle and you just mend, then you might not have any of the additional fabric in order to add a little sleeve. So in this case, what I usually do is I opt for tool or chiffon in the same color combination as your main project. And that works out really well. In fact, we're going to do something very similar for one of the upcoming projects and you will see how that works. And you can find tool and chiffon pretty much in any craft store, any sewing store. Now to get started working on my sleeve, I'm going to grab my measuring tape and I'm actually going to measure the front and the back of the sleeve all as one and that is going to serve me as a guideline of how long of a strip I need to cut in order to create my ruffle. What I got was 16 inches so I'm going to cut my ruffle about twice as long. So here you see I've cut it on the fold and it's not just a rectangle but it actually curves in towards the edges. But you can also do just a rectangle as well. But in my personal opinion this is much easier because you can curve it in for the underarm section. As a reference, the width over here is four inches, but don't forget that you will need a little bit of a seam allowance here in order to attach the ruffle and a little bit of a hem allowance here in order to finish the edges. 
The first step is to take your sleeve or the ruffle and finish the raw edge that is going to be facing the outside, so the one that's going to be facing the shoulder. Here's the dilemma though. Do I honor the original technique of the blouse and do I do everything by hand or do I just ignore it and do it in a sewing machine? I don't know, I haven't decided yet. I've been thinking about it for a while now and I think I'm going to get started by hand and then perhaps I'm going to go hybrid. So right now I'm going to finish the edge by folding it in twice and then sewing it with really small hand sewn stitches. So the sleeve is finally done, actually both of them. I did give them a really good press and I know that in the video everything seems that it comes together so very quickly and effortlessly but it did take I would say about an hour and a half for each sleeve. So definitely a little bit time consuming but not impossible at all. So if you been discouraged at times that perhaps you don't have a sewing machine but you would like to do something in terms of sewing or mending, please don't be discouraged. You can definitely do a lot of beautiful things just by hand sewing needle and thread. That being said, next step I will however do on a sewing machine. I'm going to finish the raw edge and then I'm going to put a basting stitch through it so that way I can gather this piece of fabric and turn it into a little ruffle. Here you see that finished edge and that long basting stitch. For the next step, I'm actually going to fold it in half and mark the center point with a little pin because that is going to correspond to the shoulder seam on my blouse. Now instead of placing it right sides together like we usually would when sewing a seam, I'm actually going to place this one on top of another sort of like overlapping and then I'm going to pin it at the shoulder seam first so that way I know that is my marker. Then I'm going to start gathering the sleeve from both of the ends, making sure that I gather it enough in order for it to fit on one side and on the other. Once I've gathered the necessary amount, I'm going to pin it the same way as we did before, by overlapping both layers. After that, I'm going to do the other side of the sleeve the same way. And here I wanted to show you, this is the side seam, this is the bottom of the sleeve because we did curve in these little corners. It makes it a little bit easier to sort of tuck them in over here and that's it. You don't have to worry about joining the sleeve or doing anything else to it. To attach the sleeve to the armhole, I also decided to go with hand sewing stitches and after about, I would say, two hours of hand sewing, ta-da, I finally have it done. So let me put it on and show you the final result. really happy with how this turned out and I can tell you for sure that this blouse is going to get a ton more wear than it did before so it makes my heart really really happy. So I see that we've done one for my husband, one for me, so now let's go ahead and do one for my little one. This one is damaged particularly right here in the middle but there's still plenty of wear in this t-shirt so I think it could be a really easy fix and we can love it and wear it for a little bit longer. Now if you look a little closer you can probably see an outline of the heart. That was the original design that was on this t-shirt and I did it by using my Cricut and vinyl iron-on and this was sort of really really discouraging because throughout the years that I've been using all sorts of different iron-ons, different brands, different textures, everything has been really great. All of the garments that I did with all of the different designs, they're all going strong. This one and a foil iron-on are the only two types that for some reason just 
don't look great after wash, they crinkle, they break, they peel off, as you can see right over here. So as soon as it started doing this peeling off, my daughter of course decided to help it out a little bit. And then I tried to take them off as much as I can of this t-shirt, but some of the parts are stuck there so permanently that they just won't budge. So I think we could apply a really interesting technique, which I'm sure you kind of have an idea of what I'm going here for, and get a heart on there in a different way, and therefore squeeze a little bit more life out of this garment. So first I'm going to start by creating a little paper template and in this case we're gonna go for a heart shape. Then I dug through all of the colorful fabric scraps that I have and I found this one and I thought it would be really great for this technique. I placed my template on this fabric scrap and I did cut it out but as you see a little bit bigger because the technique that I'm going to use is going to be a reverse applique. With reverse applique, instead of putting this heart on top of the garment and then stitching it down, you're actually going to place it underneath, stitch it down, and then cut out the top layer. Now I've done reverse applique before and I really love this technique, especially on this rose sweater. It washes really well, it looks cool. But one thing that I didn't really think through for this particular project is that reverse applique looks really great with thicker fabrics. But as you know, this is just a simple t-shirt. So once I cut out that heart, uh, it, <laughs> it didn't really look great, not at all. There was definitely a very good moment of panic, for sure, after which I decided to unpick the entire thing and I thought to myself, okay, if the reverse applique didn't look great on this t-shirt, surely the regular applique is going to look good because I've done this so many times before, so perhaps I could still make it work. So I've cut out another heart. I did back it up with a little bit of lightweight interfacing so that way it adds a little bit of structure because I did cut a big hole in this t-shirt with that first failed attempt, right? And then I proceeded to stitch it on top of it like I would with any regular type of applique. And here's what we have as a final result. It is definitely a good reminder that not everything goes as planned and you have to be quite flexible when it comes to creative things like that. But at the end of the day, all is well that ends well. Next I have my husband's jeans that have two holes that need to be mended. And you know what? I did cheat a little bit. I didn't film the entire process. I was just a little bit in a rush. But I do have a video with step-by-step -step instructions on what I do exactly and what supplies I use in order to mend denim. So that way it's nearly impossible to see the difference between where were the jeans, the original jeans, and where was the patch or the hole that you tried to mend. So if you have ripped crotch or maybe ripped knees or any other holes in your jeans that you just wish you could mend, definitely take a look at that video. I will leave it for you guys in the description. Next I have this sweet little top that I made years and years ago and I think I have two spots that I need to fix here. One of them was a very silly dare I say even stupid mistake that I did when I first got my cover stitch machine. And the other one is of course that it is sleeveless so that just automatically means that I do wear it less. So if I do add some sleeves and I do have the extra fabric for it, then of course it would get more wear definitely during the summer season. So first let me show you the genius thing that I did here on the hem. Now all in all cover stitch is great, I actually absolutely love using it, but most of the time you're going to be using it on knits. Here we have a woven garment, I don't exactly remember the type of fabric that it was because it was a gift from a friend, but by the feel of it, it seems like it's rayon, which means that if you leave an edge cut but not finished, it's going to fray. So here I decided let's try and finish the bottom hem with a cover stitch machine. As you can see, a little bit of the raw edge is still peeking out above the stitching, which means that after every wash, I get these little fuzzies, and that's the last thing that you want to have when you're wearing your garment. I absolutely hate when I have like loose threads and little fray edges and everything. <laughs> just drives me crazy. Luckily, this is a really easy fix. All I have to do is just fold it under and stitch down one more time, this time just with a straight stitch. Then 
that of course was the easy part now it's time to tackle the sleeves and here I decided to go for a simple circle shape where the inner circle circumference equals the entire measurement of the front and the back arm hold together I also wanted to make sure to decrease the length of the sleeve that is going to be sitting right underneath the armpit so that's exactly what I'm doing here now this type of sleeve is very easy and very straightforward and you can add it nearly to any top out there so this is definitely a good technique to keep in mind now if you need more of a step-by-step -step instruction on how to do this I have a full video tackling that so as always I will leave that for you guys in the description once the pattern is ready of course I need to cut out the sleeves themselves after that, the next step is to hem the sleeves. I'm doing that with a very narrow double fold hem, but you can also do that with a rolled hem or even with a little tiny bias tape. Once I finished the hem of the sleeves, I also went ahead and I searched the inner circle. Since the technique that I'm going to be using in order to attach the sleeve to the armhole is going to be exactly the same that we used in the other blouse. Here, as you can see, I'm placing the sleeve inside of the armhole, overlapping the layers of the fabric and then pinning it in place. The last and final step is to stitch the sleeve to the armhole, which I'm going to be doing just with a regular straight stitch, repeating the original seam of the armhole. Now that the sleeves are attached, let's go ahead and take a look at the final result. There is so much movement when it comes to circle sleeves, especially if you choose some really nice and drapey fabric. So definitely keep this technique in mind to adding sleeves to your existing garments. And with that, let's move on to this next project. Now, this is a skirt that I made for my daughter, I would say two, maybe even three years ago. It's half a circle skirt. There's a full tutorial for it. And interestingly enough, it still sort of fits. As you can imagine, it's a little bit short as of right now, so we probably need to add two and a half, maybe even three inches of length to it. The waist kind of fits, but I would need to expand it a little bit for more comfort. And there's just one extra thing that I want to add to it for more versatility. Now I think I'm going to get started on this project slightly backwards because the first thing that I want to tackle here is the extension of the length. And I'm going to do that by adding a little tool ruffle on the bottom. Now this is exactly what I've been talking about when we were doing the first little ruffle sleeve on the blouse. You can buy tool in corresponding color. In this case I went for black. One layer of tool isn't really going to give you much coverage or that color, but if you double or even triple that, then of course it's a completely different conversation. And then when you gather that up, it's going to get even more dense. First, I'm going to cut the strips of this tool in order to place it into layers and then put a basting stitch on the very top. So that way I can then pull on one of the threads and start gathering this into the ruffle. Now, as you see, I will need to have two ruffles in order to cover the entire hem of the skirt. So once one of them is already pinned in place, I'm going to stitch it down, repeating the same stitch line as the original one on the hem. All right, the first ruffle is attached. Now I'm going to repeat all of the same steps with the second one. entire ruffle is attached and now I'm ready to move on to the next step. Here I'm actually going to pull out one of the muslins that I did for my personal culottes from one of the latest drafting and sewing tutorials. Here it is and we're actually going to use this cotton poplin for creating little culottes to go underneath the skirt for more comfort and modesty. Now I do have the pattern drafted for my daughter already because I did make a sweet little pair of culottes for her using this super cute butterfly fabric. And the steps that I used are exactly the same that I used in order to draft my own culottes. So you can definitely follow that tutorial and make a pair for yourself and for your little one.
Next, I'm going to take this muslin and I'm going to start by taking it apart so that way I can use this as fabric. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that original culottes were drafted for a zipper closure. So I will need to make sure that this waist is a little bit wider so that way it can be pulled over the hips because this skirt doesn't feature a zipper but it does have an elastic waistband. Now the culottes that I made for my daughter from the pattern that I drafted over here already have a little bit of extra room in the waist because I did make them one size up. However, this is knit fabric and this is woven. So here I added just a little bit extra on each side. But here's the trick. We need to make sure that the top line over here, which is going to sit on the waist, is actually more than the half of the hip circumference since this is half of our pattern. So this top line needs to be more than half of the hip circumference in order for it to go easily over the hips. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be doing something very similar. Now that my pattern is cut, I'm going to put these culottes together, everything except for the waist seam over here because that's where we're going to join the skirt and culottes together. Here I wanted to add that usually my daughter would just wear a pair of shorts or leggings underneath her skirt and that's it. But interestingly enough, she actually doesn't have anything black in her wardrobe. So since this is going to be more like a special occasion kind of skirt, the idea just came to me to combine the culottes with the skirt and the only black fabric that I had was that poplin that I've been using for a muslin. Now that I have finished these culottes, as I mentioned, everything is done apart from the waist seam. I need to go back to my skirt. And here, in order to combine the culottes together with the skirt, first I need to remove the waistband. Usually, I would advocate for very neatly unpicking the seams and preserving those seam allowances. But in this case, I do need to make the waist a little bit bigger. And since this is a circle, cutting off the waistband with the seam allowance is going to do the trick. All right, the waistband is off. Now I need to combine the skirt and culottes together. So here's my skirt. I have two side seams and I have pressed my culottes in a way that I know where the side seam on one and on the other side. Now I'm going to place one inside of the other and we're going to match those two points. Everything is pinned together and as you see, they match, but it's not a coincidence. It is because I did measure many, many times before I finally figured out how to combine these together. So as always, measure twice and cut once. Now we just need to reattach the waistband and that's it, the skirt will be done. As you can see here, I decided to replace the original waistband with the one that I've cut from the black poplin. I also made it a little bit wider since I'm going to swap elastic as well. Now, if you need a very detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how to sew waistbands like that, you will find it in the description of this video. After I attached the waistband, the very final step was to give this tool a little bit of a trim and that's it. Let's take a look at the final result. This very next project was actually supposed to be the very first project in this video. I even filmed the whole opening scene saying that this is going to be super quick and easy. We're going to do a simple project to sort of get us started, get us going, get us motivated. And uh, as you can imagine, this project turned out to be the biggest source of frustration. I totally ate all of my words. I jinxed myself to the core because everything that I was touching related to this project seemed like it was going up in flames. Nothing was working out. I spent hours unpicking. At the end though, I do like the result, but man, what was supposed to be like an hour, maybe a two hour max upcycle turned into a multiple day debacle. So let me just share with you what was the original garment, what was the issue and what I was trying to fix. I had the shirt for many, many years and I love it. And there's nothing really dramatically wrong with it, but there are a couple of things that we have to tackle. And one of them has been driving me crazy since the very first day that I bought it. 
and I have no idea why up until now I haven't really thought <laughs> to fix it because it's such an easy fix and that is this bust pocket that serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever every time I wash it it all is crinkled up and of course I iron the shirt regardless but still it's quite difficult to iron this out and then every time I wear it this pocket opens up like this and it's just a very unattractive way of having a pocket right on your bust over here. So I have to fix that. And then I also have a couple of stains over here, here and there that I also have to tackle. Now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm going to close the opening of the pocket with just hand sewing needle and thread because I don't ever use it. It's not a functional pocket as you can see, it's just tiny little thing. The fabric itself is lightweight, so I love a good pocket in a garment, but it has to be functional, right? So I think I'm just going to close up the opening, and after that, I might stitch down the entire pocket so that way during wear, during laundry, during everything else, it doesn't flop around. That was the super easy part. There was no trouble on the horizon just yet. I quickly closed up that pocket and the next step for me was to get rid of those old stains. I had a couple of what seems like tea stains on the elbow and then an orange stain right on the bust. All right, so I did get out the stain from the sleeve, but the one that's right here on the bust, that one doesn't want to budge. And you know, I had this stain for forever now and I don't even remember how I got it. So I don't even have a point of reference where to start. So right now I'll have to figure out what would be the backup plan in order to remedy this. And that is the exact moment when the trouble did start. So here I thought, okay, I can't get rid of that stain. So what if I embroider something on top of that stain so that way it's less visible. And I tried multiple variations of this idea and nothing seemed to work. It just actually exaggerated the stain and the presence of it. And I was looking at it and I thought, okay, I have a non-functional pocket that I just stitched closed. So what if I add an actual patch pocket that would be functional and would also serve as a coverage for that stain? Of course, I didn't have the exact match of the fabric, but I did have some white shirting. So I thought, well, let's just try and see how it works. So I made the pocket, I stitched it on top, I tried the shirt on, and yes, the contrast was very, very visible. So I thought, okay, what can I do in order to make it more intentional and sort of dim down that contrast between the two fabrics? So I added some vinyl iron-on and it looked okay, but it still was standing out enough for me to go like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to wear this shirt. So I thought, what if I had another pocket to make it symmetrical? Unfortunately, it still looked kind of okay, but definitely not the best. And while I was staring at it in disbelief, thinking, oh goodness, I am just about to ruin this entire garment, I thought, well, I can't match white to white, then why don't I go in a completely opposite direction? After a ton of unpicking and problem solving, here's the final result. And as you can see, a little bit of a plot twist. So the pockets now are black with white stitching. And because it did still stand out from the overall theme of the shirt, I really wanted to tie it together. So I replaced the tabs with black tabs. And then I also added some black stitching down the button placket. Now, overall, I must say that I do like it. If the question was, do you love it like 3000%, the answer is probably going to be no, just because it is such a big departure from what I had originally envisioned to what the final result actually looks like. And it does feel a little bit Western, which I'm all totally for. I will definitely wear this. The only thing is that I don't have much black in my wardrobe, but I think with jeans, this will do just fine. But as you saw already in this video, not everything goes as planned. I definitely did not anticipate this result, but this is where we're at. So you have to be flexible. You have to come up with some other things and other ideas. And sometimes you just have to see where it's going to take you. 
Well, my dear sign friends, give yourself a really good pat on the back. I truly hope that your mending pile decreased in volume as well. And if you want to see how to upcycle kids' clothes so that way they last a little longer, you get a little bit more wear out of them, then definitely click right over here. I'll share with you three of my favorite ways how to do it. And you can also involve your kids in that as well. Until next time, happy, thoughtful sewing. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!